Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. In today's video, my travels take me to Indianapolis, Indiana, to a coin shop called The Coin Hunt. Hey, each one of these coin shop videos tells a story, and today's story is about a guy who quit the corporate world and followed his dream and opened up his own coin shop. If you enjoy videos like this, be sure to subscribe. I make a whole bunch of them. And while you're at it, hit that bell notification. Hey everybody, Kevin Hunt. The Coin Hunt is the name of the shop and it's new here in Indianapolis. Kevin, thanks for coming on the show and allowing me to come in. And yeah, no problem. We're, we're very happy to have you and uh, um, great you made it down here and, you know, yeah, love to share the show. Not too bad of a drive down I-65, uh, but uh, here we are. Um, we met in Lafayette. It, yes. I was uh, uh, actually buying Libertads from your partner, uh, Andy. Yep. And uh, he said, hey, Kevin, come on over here, meet T. And <laughs> well, I, once I heard your voice, I'm like, that's T the Silver Stair, because I've watched <laughs> you for years and years. Really? And um, when we opened, um, you know, you've been to, um, you know, Bloomington, all the coin shops here. Arthur Knight's a very, very good dear friend of mine. Uh -huh. um, I grew up in South Bend, so... Alan Nunemaker. Yeah. Um, Nunemaker uh, has a really nice shop Yes, there. he does. Yeah. And you've got a heck of a nice shop Thank here. You. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm drooling already. You've got some really, really neat, neat stuff here. But before we get to the coins and the bars and the interesting uh, rounds and all the stuff you have, you happen to, I noticed you're also uh, an aficionado in Mexican silver. Yeah, we have the complete series. I think we're... Um, for the Anza series, there was 1949, and then they skipped about three decades and then started back up in 1978. Yes. Um, and 78's and, hard to get. Yes, it is. It's sitting right there, oh. but unca unencapsulated. I think I might send it off to PCGS on Monday. Uh -huh. uh, I'm probably get a 63 or 64 out of it, hopefully. But everything else is graded, and we have the overdates uh, for 79 and 80, um, and then a very beautifully toned. Um, I believe it's a 1980, uh, but we also have the 1921 uh, Centennial uh, that pretty much started the, the Libertad uh, series. Yeah, um, uh, have you always been into the Mexican coinage or just recently um, when it's become hot? And... Probably about four or five years ago. Okay. Um, um, always love the Anzas. Um, it's just a big honking coin in your hand. Well, I, I just, I love the coin press, you know, yeah. and it's just beautiful. Um, um, you mentioned sending it off uh, for grading. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, do you do that frequently? Like in an average week, do you send a few coins off? It's about a... probably every two months or so. Um, uh -huh. You know, it you know depends. You know, coin shops like a life, kind of like Forrest Gump said, life's like a box of chocolate. You never know where you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, someone walked in yesterday with um, two. Um, three cent nickels uh, that we're sending off express to PCGS on wow. Monday, and okay. I'm hoping one gets proof 68 and ties for the finest known um, example from 1878. Wow. It's a proof three cent nickel, I'll show you, and then mm -hmm. an 1882 um, proof nickel. Three cent uh, piece. Um, we got okay. a couple other things, but it's like you know, a just a, right yeah, here, just a, just depends what walks in, and you know if, and you know it's it's all based on the customer's needs. So we're a submission point for both PCGS and NGC. So if a customer walks in um, with with a you know unbelievable coin, about a month or two ago we had a forty um, gold piece that was sixty seventy thousand dollars just. Wow. You know, raw, uh, oh just sitting in my hand. I'm like, this needs to go to PCGS right now. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be a cool feeling. Yep. How long have you been open? Uh, we opened March 1st. Uh, we had the um, do a little demo, so we've been here since January 1st, but mm -hmm. um, so we're going on four months now. You've got a nice space here uh, with not only uh, you've got, well, I won't pan that way and show Mrs. C. You've got your couple offices, you've got a, a side room here, an overflow room, room to expand, really, really nice space. 
Prior to opening the coin shop, uh, you don't have to give me too many details. Were you in the corporate world or what were you up to? Uh, yeah, so I, I used to work for J.P. Morgan Chase um, in the main cash vault here in Indianapolis. So on any given day, I had about a hundred hundred fifty million dollars sitting around me. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I was the person you really, really didn't want to deal with. I was the person that would catch Brinks and Garda and tell her, uh, Chase Teller stealing from the bank. So oh I was more of an investigator of um, cash and currency orders, you know, going out to, you know, large corporate customers, you know, were short, um, you know, missing a you know, brick of 10,000 or something. So we would, wow. you know, examine the bags and the straps and the video and, um, that had to have been a fascinating job. Oh yeah. It, it's just, do people actually think they could get away with stuff like that? Oh yeah. I mean, I've seen every single possible thing. Um, you know, there was, I think it was in Livonia, Michigan, there was a, uh, messenger who was stealing a hundred dollars every single day for like nine days straight from a <laughs> tamper-proof bag and you know we had the nine bags and they all had pinholes in it uh -huh. so we knew it was the messenger so uh, we took a um, their OSHA regulated uh, trucks the Garda and Brinks trucks it was a Garda messenger mm -hmm. so we took the we I asked Garda if we could replace the fire extinguisher inside there and put a pinhole camera ah. <laughs> in the fire extinguisher. So we got him with a little broken off um, coat hanger with some resin on it that he was sticking in the bag, slapping it down on $100 bill, rolling it up and sucking it out of the bag. That's crazy, And man. just, and that's just one, would one example. That kind of nerve to think they could get away with that mm -hmm. uh, with the sophisticated technology we have these days. Um, did you come across any like interesting bills? Did any like yeah, old we, ladies ever turn in five hundred dollar bills or three thousand dollar bills? You know, it was few and far between. The Chase Vault that dispersed all the money for the Chicago area um, actually has a currency museum inside of it um, for when Chase, you know, takes in five hundred thousand dollar bills because they don't pay it out to the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, they'll just you know give them five hundred dollars for it, a thousand and uh -huh. destroy it so chase puts them on display and it's almost a room this size it's really really spectacular that's in chicago yeah i mean only chase employees can go in, go in it's, oh, a, it's, okay. it's 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 a the room has like 200 million dollars in it it's just it's for chase employees you so. don't have your old credentials <laughs> laying around <laughs> i do actually <laughs> i know and those bills go for such Big money these days. Oh yeah, especially the thousands. I mean, since the pandemic, 500, and that's the one thing that hasn't slowed down. The market mm -hmm. um, has cooled off a little bit in the last two, three months. Mm -hmm. um, but the $500 bills and the $1,000 bills have really held, had, held, held their weight. And I noticed you have some currency over there in a case. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, what kind of stuff you have over there? We got a lot of national currency notes. This is probably the highlight. The Monrovia, okay. uh, Monrovia is just a little tiny dot on the map. It's just right outside of Indianapolis, and there's only four of those known to exist. Let me, uh, I'm gonna move my camera yeah. off the tripod. I just got that from a heritage auction last two, 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 two three weeks ago. Okay. Um, it's probably a $2,000 note, but I'll take 1500. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, you've got some stuff that you like here. You must be a Pacers fan. Yeah, I mean, we try to keep stuff in, st I'm, I'm not a huge Pacers fan. I'm from mm -hmm. South Bend, so I was, mm -hmm. t I was a Bulls fan. Yeah. Um, Are you a uh, Hoosiers fan? Yeah, I graduated, graduated from IU Bloomington. I was a history major, mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of bleeds into uh, um, the research and the, the loving of the history of coins and everything I've collected since I was eight years old. and. Mm -hmm. um, the main reason we opened was, you know, I, there's there's only been one true coin shop in a city of 1.5 million people, mm -hmm. uh, which is Lost Dutchman, which you know is a fabulous, fabulous shop. And oh, yeah. Matt, Matt Dinger, Dinger is a great friend and a, sure is uh, just awesome a, just an asset asset to uh, uh, me and the coin community, and just um, couldn't be happier that you know we have a great working relationship to where. You know, there's there's plenty of coins in the sea for for both of us. And hey, I got to pan back over here. Uh, your name is Kevin Hunt. Yep. And you've got a bar here that says Hunt on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and tell me the story behind this. <clears throat> I asked you earlier. Yeah, that's a, like a custom make that someone made with your name on it. No, no, that's a very very famous. 
to R and uh, to the silver and gold community and coin collecting community. It's um, um, a well-known story. Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, two sons thought they would corner the silver market in 1981. And at one point, I believe it was in April 18, 1981, they owned one third of the world's silver on paper. Um, um, when, when you do futures, you know, you, you buy it on paper for future delivery. And uh, it got up to 49.50. And when they actually got the silver delivered, the market crashed and it went down to about five bucks. Uh, so they had to melt everything and they went bust. But that's one of their personal bars that they had made. There's only 200 um, of that style that they made in 1981 for the Hunt Brothers. Well, I'm glad it went to a guy named Hunt. <laughs> yeah, so that's the only thing in the store that's really not for sale. I yeah. picked that up at the Fun Show mm -hmm. down in Orlando uh, this year. Just and, out of curiosity, do you feel comfortable telling me how much you paid for that? So the the guy had it listed for four fifty, and you know I walked up there. He's like, I'm not taking a cent less than four fifty because you know the historical value of it. And um, I took out my driver's license and I took out a coin hunt card and I said, uh -huh. you know, my last name's Hunt. I own a store in Indianapolis that just opened named the Coin Hunt. He goes. All right, that's about the only thing that I would tell you. You can have it for 400 so I got it for well, 400 That was a nice uh, gesture. Of yeah, this. it was very nice. And and how did you find yourself, uh, you know, renting out a space and putting this beautiful coin shop together? Uh, uh, did uh, you just get tired of the corporate world? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I worked for Chase for, you know, about a decade and Simon Property Group for a couple of years, um, mm -hmm. pretty much doing the same thing. Um, Time uh, Property Group's the biggest retail mall. Um, you know, they have like 50, 60 malls all over the country. So yeah, they're, yeah. they're taking so much cash that, you know, cash goes missing. So I had the same job of mm -hmm. trying to figure out who at Simon Property Group was sticking money in their pockets. <laughs> Gee, I know Mrs. T has probably dragged me to most of those malls. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you went from Simon to uh, living the dream here, huh? Yeah, I just live about five minutes away in Broad Ripple. Um, we're just on the periphery of Broad Ripple here on 71st and Keystone. It's just very, very nicely centrally located and the home court advantage of having the uh, um, Sunday Coin Show is just, you know, some dealers drive four or six hours to get here and wow. all I have to do is walk 30 seconds out the back door. <laughs> That's awesome, man. All right, well, listen, you've got me excited about the stuff in your cases here. Yep. I am going to do a little shopping. Thanks for the, uh, you know, the, uh, the info on how this place became. And I have a feeling uh, you are going to be very, very successful here with your uh, great location, proximity to the mall, the uh, coin show on a monthly basis. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong making friends with guys like uh, Matt Dinger as well. So, uh, man, I'll tell you what, I look forward to uh, seeing what you have. And uh, not only this trip, but coming back, uh, you know, from here on out, man. Yeah, yeah friend for life. So, uh, you know, that's what we shoot for, um, you know, just being honest and, you know, Doing the right thing for the customer. Um, have the customers found you? Have people found you? Oh yeah, yeah. We we advertise on Google. Okay. Um, so if you search coin store or gold or silver, we're the first thing that pops up. Okay. Uh, usually, which has been phenomenal for business. So, okay. Um, you know, whenever a customer clicks on our um, phone number through Google, my phone, you know, gets a notification. Google customer call. So I know it's not spam. So okay. we get about. 15, 20 calls just from Google every single day. Wow. Uh, okay. a, lot of, a lot of them are, you know, I got a 1982 transitional penny and <laughs> um, just yeah. some dumb stuff. But, you know, some stuff are just, you know, unbelievable yeah. finds and, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we live for. All right, buddy. Well, uh, I appreciate the time. And like I said, I'm going to go do some shopping. Awesome. Sounds good. A special thank you goes to my channel members who support me in my efforts to bring you videos just like this one. Now, if you're wondering about what I purchased, check out my upcoming auction.